Agriculture sector holds the most significant place in India. Our agricultural practices were mostly based on traditional farming techniques, which subsequently yielded low output. In the mid-60s, the Green Revolution triggered large-scale tractor usage in India. At that time, the country was dependent on imported technology in the field of agricultural tractor and allied machineries. Tractors offer advantages on small farms. Compact tractors are a smaller version of utility tractors and are ideal for landscaping tasks. To meet this growing demand in 1965, Government of India entrusted the responsibility of developing indigenous technology for agricultural farming to CSIR CMERI Durgapur. CMERI has been working in mechanization of the machines. If we look at the farmers, their tools are too old unless we mechanize those. So just to give the proper benefit to the farmers, CSIR CMERI started in working in mechanization of farm tools and tractor implements are part of that. CSIR CMERI initiated a project for design and development of 20 HP tractor based on indigenous know-how. The institute's research team worked round the clock and successfully designed and developed a 20 HP tractor. Mechanizations is one of the essential agricultural input for the success of multiple cropping, which was possible only by opting for these machines. This developed 20 HP Swaraj tractor is most suitable for small and medium land holdings. To enhance land and labor efficiency through appropriate farming mechanization, acquiring tractors for own use is the only viable answer. But the demand kept growing for new and more sophisticated tractors for large and medium farms. Tractors are typically designed with powerful engines to run over rough terrain and pull extremely heavy loads, making them effective in tough farming. CSIR CMERI took up the challenge and developed 35 HP tractor called Sonalika and released the know-how to Messrs International Tractors Limited, Hoshiarpur, for commercialization in the year 2002. It is today one of the most popular tractors in the country, with a single tractor being made in barely two and a half minutes. The demand is increasing, and it is even being exported to other countries. One of the major concerns was to provide marginal farmers the access to modern tools so that they can also grow more crops. To empower these Indian small farmers, Prishi Shakti, a small range diesel engine tractor was designed and developed by CSIR CMERI Durgapur. This was launched on the 20th of November 2014. Being in the budget of low price, the demand of this tractor in India is estimated to be approximately 30,000 per year. This will help in generating employment opportunities at production factories of this tractor. This venture also provided opportunities for entrepreneurship to vendors in and around the production centers at different cities. গাড়িটা পছন্দ হয়েছে গাড়িটা খুব ছোট হওয়ার দরুন অল্প জায়গার মধ্যে ঘুরে আমার চাষ করার পক্ষে সুবিধাজনক গাড়ি হলো আমি গাড়িটা দেখে যেটুকু বুঝলাম বড় গাড়িতে যা কাজ হয় ছোট গাড়িতে ঠিক তাই কাজ হচ্ছে অথচ ছোট গাড়িতে অনেকটা দাম কম প্রত্যেক গরীব চাষীদের পক্ষে কিনা সম্ভব হবে টেকনোলজি ব্রিংস দি এক্সাইটমেন্ট হেল্পস লুক ইনটু দা ফিউচার এন্ড মেক আস ব্রেভ এনাফ টু ট্রাই টু শেপ ইট CSIR CMERI has shown that we have the capability and know how to support the aspirations of the country. Son 
the eternal source of life from on earth is today the hope for our energy needs solar power represents the vast resource which could in principle meet the world's need for low carbon power generation the technology to generate power by conversion of solar light to electricity is now well proven and widely deployed the scientists of CSIR CMERI Durgapur have been working to develop different prototypes of solar PV systems to provide clean power for on or off grid application the solar PV systems have multiple applications depending on the requirement this requirement may vary ranging from running an irrigation pump in rural sector to smart street lighting in modern smart city scientists of CSIR CMERI have designed and developed IOT based surveillance system solar lotus it is a decorative structure with multiple numbers of solar panels which form the shape of a lotus the solar lotus is so designed that it can be installed in any place with minimum one square meter ground area round-the-clock built-in surveillance system of solar lotus is very effective for watching the activities of the area as well as the citizens from a distance places and can be easily traced out in case of any mishap through IOT application without deploying security personnel Solar tree will be better option compared to complete electrification because if you are going and uh, generating electricity at one place and then you are sending to the villages, there will be power losses. And if I use a mini grid itself for the village, which we know the how much energy is really required, this power losses can be reduced. And it will be green energy, so it will be very useful for our environment also. CSIR. CMERI has developed and installed the solar trees of capacities ranging from 1 kWp to 6.0 kWp. A solar tree with a capacity of 5.4 kWp has been installed at the CMERI guest house in a pond which caters to the needs of guest house. A similar structure can be seen at Ludhiana near the guest house. A solar tree has its multi-dimensional advantages. There are some establishment where there is no space for solar tree. So the only alternative left is to install solar panels on the roof. CSIR, CMERI design, developed and installed a 50 kWp capacity of grid connected rooftop solar photovoltaic system at Subdivisional Hospital, Durgapur. A higher system voltage has the advantage of higher efficiency of the entire panel and usage of lesser cross-section cables. Two numbers of inverters were considered in the design to feed the converted AC power directly into the grid. The system is fixed with modem for regular monitoring of the plant output online from anywhere through mobile or desktop. The solar roof with a capacity of 7.5 kWp has been designed and installed by arranging the panels in a decorative structure for producing solar energy. It uses multiple numbers of solar panels arranged together. In order to demonstrate the diverse designs and functional capacity of solar tree, a solar park has been installed at the complex. It clearly depicts the variations it can achieve as per demand. CSIR CMERI 
has done commendable work in developing solutions for meeting the electricity demand in the country. Post harvesting losses in India are huge. An approximation indicates we are losing more than 25,000 crores per year. If this money can be saved, farmers will be getting benefited. To deal this kind of problem, CSIR CMERI has developed a number of technologies. We have developed technology for ginger and turmeric. We have developed a technology to extract the biodiesel and oil. We have developed a technology to make a briquettes. In Northeast region, ginger and turmeric crops have suffered low sale price for very long period. To meet the challenges and sustainability of the farmer's economy, the CSIR CMERI has developed a new technology for post-harvest processing of spices like ginger, turmeric and chili to get good value of the produce. CSIR CMERI has successfully validated this technology through implementation at Cedar Mizoram and its production has already started. The farmers are getting maximum sale value by this new technology. In order to help the farmers to come out of their poverty, we started this processing unit. This uh, unit was funded by uh, CSIR in 2008 and all the technology is given by us by uh, CMERI. Under SIDAR we have 69 village, 5,440 farmers. We are working with CMERI SIDAR on Women's Technology Park. In that we are giving training to uh, women from different villages. We are training them in pickle making especially product which is available nearby their villages in the forest and we are teaching them processing also, drying also. There are many other innovative developments undertaken at the Ludhiana Institute which have transformed the post-harvest scenario in our country. The main requirement for Jatropa oil extraction arose because of the need of alternate source of energy. Jatropa oil is used for generating biodiesel. Northeast India has surplus production of tongue seeds and Jatropa. The three contributors of these seeds are Assam, Mizoram and Arunachal Pradesh. COEFM Ludhiana in 2007 developed a lightweight and energy-efficient Jatropa oil expeller with a capacity to process 1 tons per day. COEFM Ludhiana has also manufactured and supplied 150 numbers oil expellers as a part of government sponsored project. We have a developed technologies to extract the oil, what we call the oil expeller. Number of oil expellers can be made, it can be 1 ton per day, it can be the 5 ton per day, it can be 100 ton per day, so depending on the farmer crop, it can be made according to that. CSIR CMERI COEFM Ludhiana then developed a semi automatic biodiesel plant with a capacity of 1 ton per day. The main advantage of the plant was its cost. The plant was 10 times cheaper to manufacture and install. This technology has been successfully transferred to various parties in Delhi, Ludhiana and Andhra Pradesh. Subsequently, around 20 such plants have also been commissioned. The design and development of rooftop biogas plant on solid-state fermentation using kitchen waste, cake manufacturing from kitchen and farm waste to be used as fuel in kitchen. CSIR CMERI is committed to support and share the responsibility of growing India especially when it comes to the growth of agriculture in Northeast India.
municipal solid waste a menace in the growth of the country. Of the many challenges modernity is faced with, disposal of MSW happens to be one of the most gruesome ones. As per the report submitted by Central Pollution Control Board, the total quantity of waste generation is around 1,35,000 tons per day. In Durgapur Municipal Corporation area, the waste generation is in the order of 250 tons per day. The MSW is classified into two categories, the wastes collected daily from households, market, bins, vats, etc. are called live wastes. And the wastes dumped for long periods at landfill sites are called dead wastes. Unscientific disposal of wastes causes terrible health hazards for all, people, flora and fauna. Burning and incineration of wastes at the dump sites causes a high level of air and water pollution. Central Mechanical Engineering Research Institute, Durgapur and Apex Research and Development Institute under the aegis of Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. CSIR CMERI has designed and developed MSW management pilot plant where day-to-day -day wastes generated from the residential campus are being processed in an innovative way to achieve a zero waste residential campus. Let's take a look at the process. The wastes collected from the campus contain organics, plastics and small amounts of inert materials. The waste requires judicious segregation for effective disposal. To overcome this challenge, CSIR CMERI has designed and developed a mechanized segregation process where the wastes are primarily being segregated into four categories metallic wastes, biodegradable wastes, non biodegradable wastes, and inert. Generally, the waste materials from households are disposed of in plastic bags. The bags are first dropped in a crusher where the bags are teared off and the materials come out into the hopper. Hot air is passed over the materials so that the surface moisture is reduced substantially which facilitates the further segregation process. The dried materials are passed over an eddy current separator where the ferrous and non-ferrous metallic components are separated. The rest of the wastes are sent to the air separation unit through the inclined bucket conveyor. During gravity fall from the hopper, the floating plastics are being separated out using high pressure air jet. The separated plastic waste is collected in the perforated hopper. The large packets, bottles, sanitary items, etc. get blocked over the inclined vibratory screen and get collected in the attached hopper. The undersized materials, mainly biomass, is collected in the collection hopper. The segregated biodegradable wastes are being utilized for biogas production. Biogas production from organic waste is a well-developed technology. In this process, CSIR CMERI has incorporated different technological interventions to make the process more mechanized and efficient. First is biomass grinder cum stirrer. Second is the automatic gas evacuation system. Third is recycling of the slurry water. Biomass grinder cum stirrer has been installed over the feeding chamber where the biomass is being fed and mixed with fresh water and the grinded material is being mixed with recycled slurry using the stirrer. The material is then fed to the anaerobic digester where complex microbiological digestion process takes place and the biogas is produced. Biogas is a mixture of methane, carbon dioxide, water vapor, hydrogen sulfide. The floating dome over the digestion chamber is moved upward due to gas pressure. 
in the automatic gas extraction system, ultrasonic position sensor senses the position of the dome and accordingly the compressor switched on or off. The compressor sucks the gas and stores in the storage tank. The biogas can be utilized in cooking in kitchen. After carbon dioxide scrubbing, the biogas becomes methane enriched. It can be utilized in gas engine for electricity generation. The slurry coming out of the digestion chamber is stored in the slurry tank. Slurry pumps have been installed to recycle slurry water in the feeding chamber. It helps in reduction of fresh water consumption and enhance gas production yield. After anaerobic digestion, the spent slurry becomes excellent organic manure that is rich in nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. After it is dried, the manure is used in agricultural fields. CSIR CMERI has developed technology for utilization of dead waste accumulated in the landfill area. It has been tested using the collected waste from Shankarpur, the landfill of Durgapur Municipal Corporation. The waste was brought to the pilot plant for segregation and treatment. The mechanized segregation system segregates the dead waste into degraded fines, metals, non-biodegradable materials and inert. The intervention with CMERI technology can make mechanized segregation of dead waste a reality. The wastes first are put into a rotary sieve through the vibratory chute where the biodegraded fines get separated out. It can be used as manure. After the separation of fines, the remaining wastes are passed over the eddy current separator where metallic components are separated. What remains thereafter is sent to the air separation system. The non-biodegradable plastics and inert wastes are separated through gravimetric method. The separated plastics are shredded to specific size so that entrapped air gets removed and the effective surface area gets increased. CSIR CMERI has developed the solution for disposal of polymer waste through plasma gasification and pyrolysis. Municipal solid waste as well as plastic waste is being disposed of with the help of electric arc plasma technology. The plasma is generated between two oppositely charged graphite electrodes. The electric ionization is carried out through low voltage in the range of 30 to 50 volts and high current in the range of 200 to 300 amperes. The temperature is raised to as high as 3000 degrees Celsius during the ionization process. The chances of production of toxic gases like dioxin and furan at such high temperatures and anaerobic condition are bleak. The shredded plastics are fed into the plasma reactor. In the plasma gasification process, it is essential to maintain anaerobic conditions. The continuous feeding of the shredded polymer waste is utilized involving the two knife-edged valves operating alternately in tandem. The electrode position is controlled by rotating the holding knob from outside. In the reactor, the material comes in contact with the plasma and the gasification starts. The output gases are mainly carbon monoxide, hydrogen, hydrocarbons and carbon dioxide. The product gas is passed through catalytic converter and redox reactor. It converts any traces of higher hydrocarbon to lower forms and finally into carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Catalysts like nickel is used for this purpose. The carbon sieves in redox reactor reduces the additional oxygen in carbon monoxide. The gas is then cleaned 
in cyclone separator and scrubber and then cooled in the condenser. The carbon monoxide and hydrogen enriched syngas has high calorific value. It can be used for generation of electricity in gas engine. Polymer wastes are being disposed of through pyrolysis process. Pyrolysis is the thermal degradation of wastes. CSIR CMERI has developed heating process in two ways through electrical heating and through combustion of syngas and biogas. The shredded plastics are first being fed into the anaerobic reactor chamber. The plastic wastes are heated at a temperature of around 350 degrees to 450 degrees Celsius in the absence of oxygen. The condensable substances are collected in condenser in the form of oil. The oil is filtered to make it clean. The pyrolysis oil can be utilized as petro alternate fuel which can be used in industrial boilers and generators as it has equivalent calorific value of diesel. CSIR CMERI has developed technologies to convert agro wastes such as dry leaves, dead branches into briquettes that can be used as fuel. The leaves and woods are shredded into fine sizes. They are mixed with the slurry of the biogas plant or cow dung in appropriate proportion which acts as a binder. The mixture becomes fed stock for the bricket. This mixture is then fed into the bricket making machine developed by CSIR CMERI. The produced brickets are first air dried before being utilized in smokeless stove developed by CSIR CMERI. The stove has two combustion chambers. In the primary chamber, the briquettes are burned and the same flames are used in the secondary chamber for heating. It has been compared with the direct combustion of wood. It has very nominal smoke emission, which is eco-friendly and maintains a healthy working atmosphere for the end user. CSIR CMERI has developed CND waste recycling system. Where the CND wastes are being collected from different areas and processed at the pilot plant. The dumped waste then shall be sent from the hopper to the crusher through the vibratory chute and inclined belt conveyor. The debris is then crushed in the jaw crusher. The crushed materials are then sent into the rotary trommel. The fine size material comes out from the trommel. The oversized materials come out from the other end. The segregated fines coming out from the trommel are mixed at appropriate proportions with binder and water in the mixing machine. The resultant mixture is the feedstock for bricks. The mixture of optimum quantity is then fed in the die cavity of the brick making machine. The material is then pressed using the punch. The pressure is being generated and controlled in the hydraulic power pack. This gives the mixture a definite shape. The bricks are then cured in normal water for 7 to 10 days to have the desired strength. The oversized materials are being used as the aggregates for PCC. Different works like construction of pavement, car parking and embankment of tar road etc are being carried out utilizing these aggregates. The use of CMERI technologies has made the CMERI campus a zero waste colony and the scientists at the institute are working incessantly to improve the technologies even further. It is expected that the technologies developed by CMERI 
for disposal of municipal solid wastes will soon spread far and wide and help meet the challenges that these wastes pose to humankind. Bakura पश्चिम बंगाल का एक जिला जहां पानी में आयरन की मात्रा अत्यधिक है और ये लोहे की अति मात्रा जीवन में उजाला नहीं पीलापन ला रहा है असर स्वास्थ्य पर है चावल भात जो गरीबों का जीवन का आधार है पीला हो गया है पानी लाल दांत पीले चाय स्वादहीन और इसी स्वादहीनता को दूर करने का संकल्प लिया हमारे सी के वैज्ञानिक डॉक्टर विश्वजीत रूज और उनकी टीम ने जल है तो कल है और यही जल अर्थात पानी जब दूषित हो जाए तो जीवन का हर क्षेत्र विषैला हो जाता है इसीलिए हमारे वैज्ञानिकों ने तैयार किया आयरन रिमूवल प्लांट और बांकुरा जिले के करीब 50 जगह पर कोने कोने में इसे पहुंचाया ग्रामीणों तक शुद्ध जल को पहुंचाने के लिए मेलार मत पर प्रचुर मानस जल दी थे मोटामुटी जैगा अनुरोध कर लाल रंग आयरन थारण कर लाल मान आयरन बेड़ो जल टाइम रोग जला प्रचंड <laughs> ग्रामे मानुषा
at this point of time I, I am aware of a lot of villages, not only in West Bengal but elsewhere, where there is a lot of arsenic and iron deposit uh, in the water. And I think that's that's the that's one thing that really interests me. I think that if they have done, uh, they they have done some good uh, R and D and some good projects which are actually functional. And they have shown me that they have done that in, in more than. Uh, 20 villages in, in Bakura, yeah. in Bakura. So 50 places in Bakura, and Bakura for a very long period we know about water containing iron. So uh, it's good. I think the state government and other institutions should come forward and uh, implement this particular technology to ensure that people who are uh, drinking water is a is a fundamental right, and therefore getting pure drinking water is something that is not want asking for too much. So if if it can be implemented and actually utilized in the well, well being of human human uh, you know human beings i think it can't get any better so i wish them all the very best and i i hope they find the avenues where they can not only do the rd uh, rnd inside the room but also get it implemented and utilized outside in the house